So welcome to week 22 of prayers and meditations by the mother. And today we have two prayers. Again, we don't know whether we'll be able to cover both, but we'll see. We have one hour around. So let us start uh, with the first one, March 18, 1914. So would anyone like to read it out aloud for us? Yeah, yes. Um, Sardaji. Yes, yes, please yeah. go ahead. Thou art perfect knowledge, absolute consciousness. He who unites with thee is omniscient, while the union lasts. But even before attaining this stage, he who has given himself to thee in all the sincerity of his being, with all his conscious will, he who has resolved to make every effort to help in the manifestation and triumph of thy divine law of love in himself and the whole field of his influence sees all things in his life change and all circumstances begin to express thy law and assist his consecration. For him, it is the best the very best that always happens. And if in his intelligence there is still some obscurity, some ignorant desire, which at times prevents him from becoming aware of it immediately, he recognizes sooner or later that a beneficent power seemed to protect him, even from himself, and secure for him conditions most favorable to his blossoming and transfiguration, his integral conversion and utilization. As soon as one becomes conscious and convinced of this, one can no longer worry about future circumstances or the turn events take. It is with perfect serenity that one does at every moment what one thinks best, convinced that the best too is sure to come from it. Even if it is not the result which we, with our limited reasoning, expected from it. That is why, Lord, our heart is light. Our thought is, our thought in repose. That is why we turn to thee in all confidence and say peacefully, may thy will be done in a true harmony is realized. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, if anyone has gone through the prayer and would like to share uh, anything that resonated and any reflections that came, please unmute and go ahead. Okay, so I'm assuming that uh, there is no reflection at this moment and we'll take up again. Please uh, do share if anything comes up. So let us go through it line by line and see what comes up. Thou art perfect knowledge. So usually we live in thought. Thought is a very limited movement and not the absolute consciousness. It's just a very small little fragment of the manifestation. It has its proper place, but usually we overuse it. We all know that we overuse and abuse thought, like as if we are addicted to thinking and we can't do anything about it. It's almost like an addiction. So when we talk about other people who are addicts to drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, or anything else, we too, each one of us is addicted to my thoughts, my opinions, my ideas. And the addiction is so great that we don't even realize that we have addiction. At least, you know, when it is addiction of drugs and alcohol, we at least get to know it's tangible. You know? And 
uh, we get to know it's like very obvious that this person is addicted but uh, since we have this body which hides very beautifully so far as the disease doesn't manifest uh, so we hide and we hide from our own selves that we not even hide we are actually blinded we don't know that we are addicted to thoughts we are obsessed by of using this tool at a wrong place wherever it's a wrong place we suffer we use the tool at a wrong place so mother is saying thou art perfect knowledge and all of us crave for perfect knowledge what are we trying to do with the thoughts we are trying to connect the dots we want perfect knowledge but it's a distortion in our ignorance we don't realize that that's not the way where omniscience can happen you know all knowingness can happen so mother is sharing as always with us hints and clues of how to live a life which is more united with the divine consciousness and less in ignorance thou art perfect knowledge absolute consciousness so for those of us who want desperately to connect the dots of their life this is the way unite oneself to the divinity within he who unites with thee is omniscient omniscient is all knowing as we were you know it's really amazing how we connect the dots now we were reading in savitri this time the last time that ashupati owing to his this new realizations he is able to see with a new vision new light and in this vision he the riddle of the world doesn't appear like a riddle to him it's like he is the catch is revealed to ashupati that is what we have to do and from time to time all the other things will become important some attraction about a person some attraction about a place you know about a job you know what the other person is doing maybe you know some attraction here or there we get attracted to and the divine is so compassionate that even those attractions are actually nothing but they lead us ultimately to the right way it's not that they uh, they don't they, you know they they can't stumble our progress the progress has to be just one way which is union with the divine so in that sense there is a surety but considering that how many times will i get attracted why would i take detour again and again i think that is a question that we have to ask ourselves so this unification is our purpose as a human being why do we forget the purpose why do i forget the purpose even when i remind myself so many number of times when the next attraction comes i am totally blinded by that next attraction as if i lose my ground so he who unites with the is omniscient so one there once there is, is a stable true realization then we have this all knowingness you know which makes us see while the union lasts so in that glimpse that one is provided in that state of realized uh, being we see that we know we have we have rest in the being there is no agitation in the being we don't want to reach anywhere there may be visions and ideals but we we are not desperately seeking for a completion so an all knowingness just again relating to what we were reading in savitri that pervades but mother says since obviously you know it's not easy to reach that stage but even before attaining that stage he who has given himself to thee in all the sincerity of his being now this is a check that we have to do inwardly again and again and mother says we have talked about in other sessions also you know about sincerity mother says the day you are happy tell yourself i am sincere today i want nothing but the mother i am very content with the mother mother's presence in us hmm? the day you are feeling unhappy right beneath it that i am insincere today so i want something else mother is not sufficient again i am giving in to my desires and restlessness and seeking Uh, you know this restless seeking that is there so one who has given himself to thee in all the sincerity of his being for this person 
even if a realization is not there, this all knowingness, cosmic realization is not there, with all his conscious will, if I have given myself again and again to the mother, he who has resolved to make every effort to make help in the manifestation and triumph of thy divine law of love in himself and the whole field of his influence. Now, we see that just like we are begging to fulfill our unfulfilled wishes, each one of us is begging. The begging may be in different areas. One may be begging in relationships, the other may be begging in power, money, respect, approval, name, fame, my idea, I am right. So there is a constant begging, begging going on. So mother says that if now I have again and again made this conscious surrender to divine presence, that it is for you that I live, and I want to live for you. The whole being belongs to you. Then whenever a begging state arises, whenever a sense of lack arises, one will be able to let go of that sense of lack. One will loosen the grip. One would not follow the dictates. So mother says that one who has had made, made this resolve to make the triumph of, of thy law of love in himself, and the whole field of his influence sees all things in his life change. You know, so when I am interacting in a relationship, you know, I see that, oh, you know, again, my begging, my beggar is rising up his head. Now I would look at it and I would say, haven't I done that enough? And what kind of a torture it is on the other person when I put this burden of expectation on the other person or even on myself. Now I won't do that. So the moment I take off that burden of expectation in any workplace, relationship, wherever, you know, life, we begin to express the law of love. Love is light and free. It's not blocking you. It doesn't burden you. Love makes us light. It fills us with something beautiful. So when every time this begging arises in me, if I can let go of that grip for once, and that has to be done every moment, then I allow the law of love to manifest. I say that I am very content with the presence of the mother within me. Mother knows the best and I will be guided to my path. I don't need to hanker about for anything. Then we are manifesting. It's not that we are not putting efforts, but we are not in agitation and restlessness. We are not there. That if it doesn't happen, then what? Then what? So we allow this law of love to express in ourselves and also it spills around in our influence. Then we see all things in life change. All circumstances begin to express thy law and assist his consecration. So many a times it may happen that we uh, lose people in our life whom we dearly loved. Now on the surface, it appears very cruel, but we don't realize that for a truer consecration in that point of my life, it's not that it has to happen every time, but in one case, particular case, it may be required that there is so much love that is there, which we uh, ooze out on just one person in our life. And that one person, when it is taken away, the ground beneath me is ripped apart. Now, what do I do with all this love? So we, we ultimately turn to the divine. We are like that. We, in the beginning, we don't turn it to the divine. And when we say that we are turning it to the divine, we are turning it to each aspect of manifestation, each person, each sentient being. Earlier, this love, which was just focused and concentrated on one particular person. Now I have that capacity that with so much of love in the heart, I can distribute it. Since everything is divine manifested, so I not only one, I can you know, share it, share this love with everyone around. I don't have to just focus it on one. So many a times this is the way. It appears very cruel, but this is only for a truer consecration to happen. And then it becomes more detached. You know, this, this kind of love now becomes more detached, that you are not wanting anything from giving love. 
just giving love because you can't help it. There is no other way you want to live. For him, it is the best, the very best that happened. Now, a person in this state, whenever moment to moment I am in this state, then in that very moment, the very best happens. Now, that very best may not be according to my limited logical mind. The logical mind may say, okay, I wanted this person, I wanted to get married and that is not happening. So, the divine is cruel because I have an image in my head that if the divine is compassionate, this marriage should happen. But the divine has a larger plan which we don't know. So, that if we can you know, bow down our head and say that, you know, of course, this is not happening as per I thought about it. But I know that you have a larger plan and that is good for me. So that faith is there, that unshakable faith is there. For him, it is the best, the very best that ha always happens. And if in his intelligence, there is still some obscurity, which doesn't let me see in the larger picture, some ignorant desire, which at times prevent him from becoming aware of it immediately. So I may be on the path. Yet we are so blinded in our ignorance that I may not even know that a desire is operating in me and I am following it. That can happen. That happens. So there may be an ignorant desire which I may not be aware of, which at times prevents him from becoming aware of it immediately. He recognizes sooner or later. Now this is very beautiful. At times sooner is not possible. So later it happens after a bit of suffering that I am made conscious of what was the stumbling block I was sticking to. You know, what was the desire I was sticking to? What was this rigidity and dogma that I was sticking to which was not letting me move ahead and was giving me a lot of suffering. So that at times it reveal, reveal later. Why later? Because we are weak. You know, at times we fall weak in our knees. So if some, somebody says that, oh, this person whom you really dearly love and are attached to, that uh, needs to be taken away from you. So at one point of time, I may not be ready. I may cry and you know howl and everything. So I stay with that person, undergo some suffering. So later I realize that it is not good for me to stick to anyone. So sooner or later we realize for a person who truly wants to consecrate his life to the divine. He recognizes sooner or later that a beneficent power seemed to protect him even from himself. Good that the wish was not granted. It's good. And secure him for him conditions most favorable to his blossoming and transfiguration. We don't know what is good for you, for, for us. We don't know. We think that what is good for me is to have a stable relationship with this person. But that stable relationship may just limit and suffocate me. That may not allow my full blossoming. How, what do I know? Don't we know that by this time that how ignorant we are? So how can we trust our thoughts and the ideas that we have? So mother says that then something happens which may appear very weird and also at times very cruel from the social point of view, but these conditions are the most favorable for his blossoming and transfiguration. So for a true consecration to the divinity, these conditions are important. Sooner or later, they will happen. If centrally I have surrendered for is integral conversion and utilization. So if in my heart, even for once I have thought or given myself to the divine that make me an instrument of your work. Then as Alogda shares, you know, just wait for it. And you'll be, you know, many a times it's like you're ripped apart completely. And it's not, it's the ego that is ripped apart. The images that we have about ourselves, that I am this weak and this limited and this is how I operate, that is how I can't operate. All this is shattered. We are just standing there naked, vulnerable, complete. So that the softening can happen, the shell of the ego breaks down and we can offer ourselves completely to the divine work.
which at times appear from the social point of view can appear very cruel and tragic you know i remember was talking to a person who has lost a partner and the partner both of them were on a nice spiritual path you know, now she is not able to accept you know that so much of pain i am going through why is it so hard now one who sees objectively can a bit see here that since they were both into each other and too much kind of self giving to each other again as mother says that human love is a step to a diviner and greater love but we can't remain at this limited human love because then we narrow our horizon so all the love all the conversation is just the happening with one person so that person is not there anymore you are broken you are shattered what to do how long can you suffocate yourself in that aloneness and aloofness and very soon you would realize that i will have to open my heart and just like i loved that person and cared and walked with that person now i have to walk alone also with all the beings that happen to you know, uh, i happen to meet on the way so that love which was just showered upon on one person now it has to we have to expand our heart at times for us it's very difficult because of our attachments the past comes again and again we are not able to let go why that person was taken away but if we see the larger picture we see that the divine has uh, greater plans for us so we want to say no 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 i am happy within these four walls two people in my life but he says you have to expand and at times we keep on saying no 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 for a long time no matter how ready we are so suddenly something is taken away you know it appears tragic because we as human beings we think that the purpose of a human life is having a settled family good family nothing should happen to the family two little children three little children and that's it good job good car but that's not it we know now from mother and shurabindu the purpose is to grow in consciousness how would i grow in consciousness if i stick to two or three things in my life so it comes with an initial disappointment but i believe that once we grow into it uh, in the love for the mother and in love for humanity and all the sentient beings once we grow into it then it's a greater joy for which we have to let go of the lesser joys so anything at this moment we just uh, touch the first paragraph for now anyone yeah i just wanted to know how simply and beautifully uh, you know this conveys the how the things that we think we want or will make us happy and how you know we keep settling for smaller things like you know okay like you were sharing that you know this is my house these two people you know this is what i want why was it taken away from me i mean how much we are loved that you know we are constantly shaken up and told that no 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 you know don't you, we don't stop here there's more we don't stop here there's more so it's i mean so much i would say compassion is there you know it's so when say if you have to discipline your child or if you want to stop him when you see him limiting himself as a parent you see it's so hard to be do know not give them what they want all the time or take something away so that they know there's more there's more there's more so there's so much compassion in the so called unkindness or non fulfillment and this such a beautiful prayer to see that so clearly thank you yeah yeah absolutely yes. as we say that we can give up on of on ourselves but the divine never gives up on his children yes
Yes, Rashmi ji, you wanted to share? Yeah, Namaste, Dr. Monica. Yeah, Namaste, please go ahead. Yeah. I, I just, uh, to two of uh, mothers and Sri Aurobindo's quotes uh, just flashed in my mind. Uh, a total self giving is the real purpose of existence that the mother uh, spoke. And uh, at one uh, stage in our life, we feel uh, that there is really no other purpose in our life rather than to give ourselves completely. And the next quote is from Sri Aurobindo, which is again a corollary or uh, you know, that helps us to really understand either the, simply the wheel of self-giving forces away by its power the veil between God and man. It annuls every error and annihilates every obstacle. These two quotes are so powerful and complement each other. So at one stage of our life, when we become, you know, as mother says here, completely with all sincerity of our being, with a conscious will, and we have really resolved to make every effort to give ourselves, then uh, I think uh, she carries us. So uh, all that pain, or suffering, if that comes, it is because of, as you rightly said, our ego. And uh, that uh, uh, is a needing process. You know, something is better to, she is trying to create something better. So pain has a role also in our, in making us uh, more divine, rather removing some dross. Let me put it in that way. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yes. You know, and when we are uh, attached to the little toys that we are attached to, you know, then in the beginning, when they are taken away, as Tanu was sharing, if a parent would want to you know, de-addict a child from lollipops, for example, you know, and when you snatch away or, you know, you don't give what the child wants, it's very hard in the beginning, you know, that's why you mentioned, you know, Dr. Rashmi, you mentioned pain, you know, so in the beginning, we'll have to go through this pain of giving away the lolly, because so far, I've not yet got the, gotten or in touch with the bigger joy. So I feel that, oh my God, what are you taking away from me? <laughs> this, this was my life, yeah. Actually, the, the best thing is that, she, she knows when to take away, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even then it pains. You know, one cannot say it doesn't pain. It pains very much. Yeah. It pains very much. Yes. But the point is that because in your heart of hearts, mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a sincere aspiration somewhere. Exactly. Du during the, uh, during the, uh, on the path, mm -hmm. at one point of time, we have aspired for that actually. Mm -hmm. So in our heart of hearts. Yeah. So one day, one day she just takes it away, and uh, you, 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 your physical or vital uh, really you know craves for it while it was <laughs> taken away. Yeah. But 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 uh, yeah, But when you really uh, as, as as she writes uh, rightly uh, tells you. When you connect actually again in your uh, silent moments yeah. uh, with with her, uh, you one to one, then you understand the, how much of uh, infinite, uh, how much love with how yeah. much love she has taken away actually. Yeah, yeah. And then 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 your gratitude, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it is boundless gratitude actually that that you did the right thing. <laughs> yes. You yes. took 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 it away at the right moment, and uh, so much of love she has for us. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I think if one can see uh, and go through a challenging situation like this, the attitude that you share that uh, so much of love divine has to 
take me away from my addictions. I think it's a very good baby step for each one of us if we can have that attitude. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that is that is why it is very necessary that uh, every day we connect with her, mm. maybe for a few moments, because her love is constant, and yeah. it is. Uh, and once uh, we are silent, uh, we feel that she is there with us, yeah. gu guiding our steps, yeah. so helping her, el helping us. Absolutely. So, yes. thank you actually for this uh, for these sessions. This helps helps me completely. Mm -hmm. you know, Thank you. Recover. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Thanks for sharing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, if one is a little bit conscious, you know, and there's grace, even when one is beat, being beaten up, one knows this is for one's good. I mean, you could be, you know, not happy and of course, you know, you're going through a tough time and yet while you're going you know while you're being cooked there's a voice that's saying that you know this is good for me <laughs> this is good for me yeah that the difference between you know like that what is it you know that hit that this is auspicious that this mm -hmm. will take me where i need to be yeah and yeah so that really helps it. yes yes absolutely It's almost like, you know, one, when one gives birth to a child, there is labor pain and one knows that this is happening for a new birth. So, yes, absolutely. And it allows us to go through that pain that, yes, it will soon be over and a new birth will happen. Yes. Yes, Vapu. Yeah, I was also going to sometimes things are taken away like we've talking about we've just talked about yet sometimes I notice things stay the same and that can also feel painful you know in in the sense circumstances um, or relationships or um, yeah just life situations seem that the mind can judge as really static or um, like it requires change. Um, like I sometimes notice there can be thoughts such as, oh, I'm not serving her enough or I need to create some kind of major change in order to give myself more. And what is that change? And yet it seems life continues outwardly in much the familiar way and with the familiar faces even. And that's when I think to have peace there is also required and is a challenge sometimes, you know, um, because it can feel painful. It can feel like, oh, this frustration for something new to come in or some major, I don't know, like a change of season, you know, a reinvention of oneself. And yet there's some reason that she seems to continue what seems familiar, you know, and to have that faith then that even though it seems same old, same old, that something is being worked out. But I, um, I notice that can sometimes feel quite painful and challenging for myself, this kind of inner push or voice of like, come on, it's not enough, or, or what is it to give yourself more to her, or you know, some criticism of the status quo and wanting to somehow rock the boat. Um, yet the boat's not being rocked. <laughs> So yeah, it's mm -hmm. it seems to be on both sides yeah. to accept when it seems mundane in everyday life, as well as when mm -hmm. things are taken away or shaken up in a big way. Mm -hmm. One thing which comes to me here is uh, first of all that the idea in our head, uh, because we have ideas in our head, we have images, uh, we are not even aware mostly that we are following an image. So I may be having an idea in my head that uh, this is the image in which uh, the bo boat should be rocked, as you said. And that may not happen in that particular way that I want. So whatever is there, 
as you said that it appears very mundane and here there is a catch i feel where we can work upon no matter where we are now when they talk about full consecration and mother talks about each thought each feeling each sense perception turning to the divine even in the so called day to day mundane life on the surface if in the detailed moments of that day i can look at my thoughts and i can see uh, am i with the mother all the time or am i with my thoughts all the time because we can't in one little moment you know consider one millisecond we can't be both with the mother and in our stories so if i am with the mother then i am not with my stories very simple and then life cannot be boring with mother life cannot be boring if life is boring definitely i am in the older grooves definitely it is almost definite that i am thinking in the same patterns because they are repetitive you know they are mechanical they are mundane they are boring mother is adventurous for those of us who have given or even tasted this giving for even for a moment we would vouch for it that mother is far from being boring <laughs> she makes the unfolding of life possible for us so i think this is a internal check that we can do any time and anywhere no matter even the situation outwardly seems to be like the same familiar as you said inwardly we can have adventure and when we start to have adventure inwardly then the outward bound to change it is bound to change and that's why the inner comes first and then the outer you know just like we say mental vital transformation and the physical transformation is the last to come so just like that first we become conscious of the mother in our each thought each feeling and then completely not relying on our stories but on mas name or you know bringing the mind to the body to the present moment living here and now not in our forest of thoughts then we see that newer possibilities open up in so called older mundane moments and now they are not mundane anymore now they open us to new possibilities new adventures because the mind is not stuck in the old grooves only when the mind is stuck in the old grooves do we feel this uh, almost like a boredom with our life so i think this uh, this is what comes to me that i would rather do an internal check where is my mind resting throughout the day if the mind is resting in the patterns definitely i will feel bored because who wants to have the same tape repeated again and again how many times can you watch the same tape it's boring but if we now put an effort to remain with the mother there is an effort required it's easy to remain in the patterns and that's why many a times it happens that we have very great discussions you know but our habits don't change so i may have a great discussion on mother and mother's name but you know the the moment the session is over i'm back in my older grooves there is no effort to remain with the mother and that is why suffering comes because suffering makes it intensely urgent for me to remember mother and that's why sri aurobindo and mother say that it is urgent it is required for the way we are right now we are so stubborn to be sticking to our grooves so this is something conscious which i can do so the moment i see that uh, look you know i am again feeling a bit of mundaneness and boredom where am i dwelling and one can be actually have an experiment for oneself the one i feel that it's a surety that we are stuck in our thoughts only they are boring mother is full of adventure she is the unknown in which she unfolds our life and through chance happenings and through you know chance meetings she makes our lives life really beautiful so i would check that with him
just like Sri Aurobindo in Alipur Jail. You know, how boring is 10 by 10 or I don't know, even smaller space. The same food every day mixed with all the stuff that one can not imagine. There he has the best adventure of his life. How is that possible? So there is more to life than just the outward appearances. And Mother talks about this, that when the outward appearances uh, lose their reality and your inner reality becomes more concrete, then you are born into a new consciousness. So Mother says that make that inner reality your concrete reality. Just like if I touch my laptop, I feel that, oh, you know, this is concrete, this is real. I know that it is there. We are sure about it. She says that just like that, you are so sure of the outward appearances. You have to be less and less sure of them. And you have to make your inner world a more concreter reality than the out one, outer, outward one. Then the shift happens. And then the outward will change for whatever is the need of the moment. But that requires, you know, a constant effort, a constant sankalp, you know, because we forget, we fall into our old patterns. It's It happens with each one of us. It's not easy path. That's why so many things have been written. So many avatars have come and gone. The path is not easy, but then suffering is also not easy. You know, so if I live by old patterns, I suffer. Life becomes dull. That's also not easy. That's also not giving me joy. So which one do I choose? Do I choose the difficulty of putting effort and remaining with the mother, turning each thought and feeling to the mother? Or do I choose the other difficulty of staying with my patterns, which is easier, so to say, uh, requires less effort, but it's also making my life really dull and you know, monotonous. So yeah, which one, which difficulty do I choose? Yeah, yes, Vapna. Yeah, I'm, I'm following what you're saying and, and yes, resonating too. And uh, what my mind's going is like, it's so interesting how, you know, in other sessions, we've also touched on how the, the being with mother or being within or the spiritual dimension is also has a quality of the mundane. Because there's this fine line somehow between the mundane that seems boring and then that part of me that can judge, well, I'm trying to be with the mother, but I, I'm expecting being with mother will feel, I don't know, somehow extremely peaceful or something very obvious, you know, some kind of um, very tangible peace or um, some kind of, I don't know, you know, using Actually, a Christian analogy, yeah, it like is, the angel it, singing. It is a, a tangible peace only when we make it more concrete. You know, usually we have this restless energy within us, life energy, which wants to thwart itself out to a life situation, wants something, you know, it just eagerly goes out from our body. You know? And that's why we stick. We stick to ideas, we stick to life situations, we stick to people, places. You know? So this life energy, which is untamed, it goes out as if it can't stay in the body. And these are what can be in one sense called our desires but they just rush out now if i am now convinced that i have haven't i suffered enough running after these attractions and enchantments in this world so that's why suffering is a blessing because it makes me convinced and if at the moment i have not yet suffered enough no one can make me convinced to stay with the mother no one i will have to suffer more but there are stages in our life where we have tasted enough suffering and we know that every time I rush out this life energy to a person, to a situation and like, you know, want to fulfill myself by consuming something out there, I suffer. Sooner or later, pleasure turns to pain. If we are convinced, then I will go through that initial mundaneness, as you said, of being with the mother. Initially, it may appear mundane, you're right. But the more we make it our concrete reality, the more that peace becomes more tangible for me 
rather than the outward happenings then nobody can convince me for the other thing so again it has to be experimented and again and again we will sway we will get enchanted again yet again yet again but how many times sooner or later one will get convinced that i now having suffered enough and looking at how people suffer when they run after their desires i also look at them so much of suffering so can i for once become one drop of poison less there is so much poison everyone is begging can i stop just my begging that's why mother says that even if a few of us turn to pure gold that would be enough so that conviction has to come from within and initially meditation or you know sitting with the mother parallelly in our consciousness initially it may appear as you rightly said bland but it will appear bland only when i am still enchanted by the outward attractions in that sense it may appear bland but the more i explore the inner world there is no end to the explorations there then i get a different taste like initially i am attracted to the oily food everywhere i see samosa or jalebi i my you know saliva i salivate and i want to go out so i want to st- stay in but the life energy wants to thrust itself out on the stall where there is samosa and jalebi no so it appears staying within in this area where i am like dwindling into boats here in front is samosa and jalebi you know and here is just bringing the mind home of course bl- bringing the mind home becomes it seems very mundane and who wants to do that bland thing but if i get colitis if i get some irritable bowel syndrome you know, then naturally the samosa and jalebi loses grip over me now i want to take care of myself that's how suffering comes a blessing comes as a blessing so if we have not suffered enough let us suffer some more then we will be convinced what is good for us no one can convince us shri aurobindo has written life divine it is available at a price cheaper than our holiday vacation but our life is not changed why because he can't you know he is there he has done the work which is required for an easy path for us but free will is there only i choose when i am ready he would not thrust the life divine on me he has done his job now i have to pick whether i pick a travel for myself or whether i pick life divine today i am not saying that travel is bad you know? <laughs> don't misunderstand please just given an example you know, in different cases you know that we choose usually our older habits and older attractions over the higher life that is granted to us also at the same time so what do i choose what do i take juice in one has to take delight you know so if i still have delight in the samosa and jalebi let me have more samosa and jalebi so that my stomach is really content and maybe uh, more suffering comes with it since the law of determinism will be acting whatever i eat will affect me so if i eat life divine it will affect me if i eat samosa and jalebi it will affect me you know in our ignorance the law of determinism is working it's an operation it's only when we surrender fully to the grace that it changes the law of determinism and we don't have to now abide by to that law you know the iron law but so long as we remain in our ignorance we will have to uh, go through all these determinisms that are there so if i smoke a cigarette i can get ill very simple very simple so what do i want we'll have to make a conscious choice Yeah, that's good because I also see then that I can run after mother with that same kind of energy rushing out of the body that you yes. were speaking about. Yes. So it becomes this kind of grabbing or pulling yes. to be connected to her, to feel like 100% like now I'm really with you mother, you know, let me feel it or something. And how that is uh 
something that's self-defeating you know mm. that it, it sabotages the whole yeah. aspiration in the first place yeah so it's interesting not to run after even that even a, the yes. wish to be with her needs to be somehow more pe peaceful or imbued with some stillness or, or yeah yeah Well, this lower vital, the region below the, you know, the lower abdomen, it's a very interesting place, especially for those of us who have this vital rush of energy, which goes off out in this world as desire. You know, and we are not able to, the, the vital sticking is very hard. It's like, we don't know how to stop that sticking. So I felt, uh, and there was once uh, a line that I read when initially I, got in touch with Savitri that she was feeling so much of pain and grief when she saw herself losing Satyavan you know, that she just kind of lost it for a moment and she said okay I am also going to die if Satyavan dies but then suddenly she goes within her being since a voice comes and it says that oh, oh you know but this is not what you came here for you came here for finding your soul and make making the mission possible what is granted to you so go go in search of your soul so with all that rush of energy which was going out towards satyavan and you know the grief and all that she turns all that energy within and i remember the first time i read this at the time when i myself was going through such an experience suddenly when i decided and chose for myself again grace and action that that the whole energy which was outwardly kind of rushing to things and people it just turned within and a very deep peace settled in the lower abdomen area but i saw that it was now a choice that had to be made that i now don't want to waste my time going out there so I don't know, again, you know, it's uh, grace and choice, it's all combined because if I'm able to exercise my choice, that also is a working of grace. So, but at least we, I, I was able to see that this, and then later on I read in Sri Aurobindo's writings that this lower vital, its seat is in the lower abdomen. And that day onward, my problem which i was having with an upset tummy for many many months suddenly it got resolved i didn't have to take any medicines i did not have to undergo any scans further you know that what's happening to me my stomach is not all right so it's very strange how these things work and desires specifically the vital desires these you know obsessive wants from people and situations how they make us you know uh, they disturb the harmony of our body you know and the body tells by a disturbed balance the body tells that i'm not doing fine and if only we can listen to this disturbed balance you know, so if and also i remember recollect that i used to also settle down a very deep peace in that lower abdomen whenever i would feel a rush of life energy wanting to go outward and sticking to a person a situation and wanting things my way immediately i would sense that energy and like as mother says call peace and a deep peace would settle in that lower abdomen re region that really really helped me with this vital rushing out you know, because i have experienced how how painful it is this vital rushing out it's very sticky in nature one, one feels helpless as to what to do with so much of energy. So it has to kind of get absorbed in this cushion of peace. You know, it, peace is like a big, large, humongous cushion in which all that energy can become ingathered. And once that energy becomes ingathered, the same energy can be now used for devotion, giving oneself to the mother and not taking it again and again in every direction that one gets enchanted with so that gives us grace this collected in gathered vital energy which now doesn't rush forward to any other attraction this gives us grace and grace 
also in our actions, grace in our speech, words, thoughts, feelings. So we have to ingather this scattered consciousness. And it's a constant process because we have so many attractions in our life. So again, that was know, very beautiful, Monica. Yeah, very beautiful. Thanks for your sharing. Yeah, thank you. Glad. So as soon as one becomes conscious and convinced of this, so this is our task. We have to become convinced you know, through our experiences, through our turmoils. As soon as one becomes conscious and convinced of this, that whatever is happening is happening for my growth as you were pointing at earlier, one can no longer worry about future circumstances or the turn events take. Now you see yourself growing with each aspect of difficulty in your life. You see that, okay, if there is a difficult situation, how much grounding it is giving me, good for me, as Taru is pointing at earlier, you know, there is pain, there is discomfort, but good for me. There is also that understanding. Just like, you know, in Savitri, we very, very clearly see that Savitri, for once, she feels the grief and pain of losing a loved one. But then she knows that something good is happening. I, I have to make use of this pain. So then we don't worry about future circumstances or the turn events take. It is with perfect serenity that one does at every moment what one thinks best. So now we act not for our own little petty desires but for what is as was pointed earlier what is in hit what is benefiting me and people around me that step will be taken up so what does at every moment what one thinks best convinced that the best too is sure to come from it even if it is not the result which we with our limited reasoning expected from it so i may think that i am now here you know, waiting for a perfect job to appear. But maybe the divine has a different plan for you. Mm -hmm. So we think in our grooves. What is the social groove? The social groove is after you are done with your schooling and education, you, sh you must get a job. If that is not happening, something wrong is happening. Mm -hmm. But the divine has a greater plan. He knows your potential. You know, he has a bigger plan for you. So wait. Wait and in, in that wait, we don't have to just passively wait. We have to actively, as mother says, in every moment, think, feel and act according to our highest possibility. One thinks the best. In, in that understanding, what is the best I can give? So that best which will come, which will not be according to our limited understanding the best way that we think of. That I may be thinking that I am absorbed in Cornell or Harvard or this or that university, but that's not the best that divine thinks for me. So I will suffer if I just keep on sticking to my opinion. So that is why, Lord, our heart is light. So as Kabirji says, you know, Chaha gai chinta miti manwa be parvaha jinko kuch nahi chahiye wo shahan ke shah. He says, now I have no more desires and wants and demands. Now I have no more worries either. So the more our demands, desires, likings go away, the worries also go away. Why? Because we worry only when things are not happening according to what I wanted. So when what I want is dissolving, then where is the worry? There is no place for worry. So the worries also dissolve, the likings, preferences also dissolve. There is so much faith in the divinity that I, you know, jinko kuch nahi chahiye, wo shahan ke shah. Who is the king? The true king is now one who has taken anchor within himself, who has now recognized that my home in, is in this temple. Here I have to find the immanent divine. Then I am the king. I, am re, I have to reclaim my kingdom within, which is now for, for now given to the thought. The ego personality is kind of captured this palace. 
so this palace has to be taken away from the ego personality and it has to be the divine has to be invoked and enthroned in this inner palace now i am the king swaraj as they say smara samrat and swaraj so that is why lord our heart is light now where is the worry where is the burden there is no worry there is no burden our thought in repose now we excessively think now i don't need to excessively think the mind is still the mind is quiet with the mother it is rested peacefully in the with the feet of the lord it's in repose that is why we turn to thee in all confidence and say peacefully may thy will be done in it true harmony in realized now we can say you know that whatever i think of is always limited whatever i conceive of is always limited so mother knows the best and whatever situation is given in front of me i will choose the highest possibility of thought feeling and action in that that is my task so may thy will be done o mother you know the best and that is where in me in individually me and also in collective true harmony will be realized because now there is no one who wants to assert and force one's opinion on the divine so there is harmony and as shorbindu says that true harmony that we want badly in our relationships in world in globally in nations that cannot be achieved if each one of us does not consciously become conscious of our immanent divine there is no way that true harmony can be realized so it it is a social responsibility that we enthrone the true king within us then only a true harmony can be seen in relationships at workplace amongst nations and within the being so mind mental is not you know ag agitatedly fighting with the vital vital is not you know after the physical that conflict now ends the more and more we give ourselves to the divine that is what we shirobindo calls it as the jeevan mukta for example now that person doesn't have any enchantment from the worldly material existence yeah there may be visions that we may work for but it's not that i am wanting to complete my incompletion through this worldly material existence because i have gotten completion within chaha gayi chinta miti jeevan mukta as mother says one has to become desireless this is how we become desireless first we run after desires we make ourselves suffer wound and bleed much then when we are convinced we get back home because if without suffering someone says no no you would not get it there then i won't be convinced so conviction is very important so that's why movements of our life experiences they all make us convinced where to turn truly to in order to find true home okay, so i think we can uh, take up the next prayer next time so any uh, last reflections anyone yes yes sir. very beautiful session you really loved it <laughs> glad yeah. thanks for sharing Yes, Taru. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. I wanted to say that you know how we, there are words, and then we have made up our own meaning. To so say, I have this word responsibility, right? And all of us, you know, we want to be responsible. It's considered a very good word, a very ethical word, a very sacred word. But what you just shared, you know, through this prayer. feels like my only responsibility right like if i'm suffering my thing is not oh my god you know i've done bad karma why you know why is this happening to me but again questioning that why am i suffering why am i here you know the, that book art of suffering well i mean just the title that i have this potential of even suffering well there's a way to suffer 
Absolutely. So why am I not going for that way? You know, the uh, some days back, I found myself in a situation where I didn't want to be. You know, I was pulled into some conversations and stuff, and I was like, oh my god, I didn't want to be. You know, I was cribbing and stuff. And after a day, it came to me. But why were you there? You know, even when you were there, why were you not with the mother? So why are you cribbing, right? Like the hundred percent responsibility. is mine you know for my well being for my mental state i can be anywhere but if i choose to suffer no matter what has been given to me it could sound like a word play but it's not we have seen this more and more that it's not i have a choice i have a choice i have a choice so next time something if we finding overwhelming or monotonous you know asking ourselves that how did i get there and you know i can retrace the steps back that like this is where how i get out and of course you know the mother is there and we leave her right we all this way absolutely yeah, thank that's you. the only responsibility yes thank you thank you for reiterating and you know as mother shares that carry your spiritual atmosphere wherever you go i think that is what is expected of us you know all of us have been associated with mother's words you know their wisdom their light for a long time now you know so what is expected of us is that wherever we go mother says i'll find out the exact words i'm forgetting it she says carry your own spiritual atmosphere that's the power that we have uh, to manifest not only when we are alone in our alone times but that has to become so concrete that spiritual atmosphere that wherever we go you in slums in filth in dirt you know you carry so much of light and mother's devotion with you that each aspect is touched with that spiritual atmosphere so that is our possibility and as you said that we must aim for the and also not only aim we must walk the highest path Th- that that's our birth right we deserve that goodness I think this can be, although mother doesn't talk about self-love, you know, she says not to talk about that. But I think this is, in true sense, self-love, as you was say, sharing that th- this is how I can take care of my well-being. You know that no matter wherever I am, I am, I have my own spiritual inner concrete reality. You know, I am responsible for my inner wellness, and which spills out. even if not wantingly it just spills out and you know it's like it spreads like a contagion that's the thing that we have to do it's the mission one can say yes anything else anyone okay so thank you thank you so much for listening and collectively reflecting and thank you thank yeah. you monika thank you thank Sita you Ji. monika thank you sharu thank you everybody thank you thank you thanks monika thanks everyone thank, thank you, you.